I know many people are already annoyed of the Aaron Rodgers conversation, but news today makes this a more relevant discussion. So we welcome in our friend Carmen Vitale of Fox Sports. She's their NFC North reporter. She wrote an article for FoxSports.com. What could an Aaron Rodgers trade look like? It's complicated, like a Facebook relationship. What's up, Carm? Hi, Buck. It's so good to hear from you. I feel like I only get I only get a text when it's like, oh, wait, right. I have a friend that does these things that maybe could, you know, talk about it. Excuse me. I feel like you I don't were... I don't ever get a text outside of that. That no, I almost said a bad word on the radio that I can't say. I feel like you are one of the first people that I call anytime we're at the combine. Uh yeah, but like I thought we were friends outside of work, Buck. We are. Carmen, you live in Los Angeles, and you live <laughs> apparently you have two homes now that you're big, big time Fox Sports, Los Angeles or Chicago. I feel like that's an excusable. We we are we are the kind of people that you know if the Titans are in Tampa Bay for a week long of training camp, I'm gonna hit you up, and it's gonna be yeah. like we just saw each other at the combine. But other than no, that, like right. I I don't know I don't know why this needs to be uh I, I don't know why this needs to be a a 24 seven thing, even though I do love you very much. <laughs> Wow. No, you're entirely right. I really actually love sports media friends that are like that. And you just, you get together and it's like no time at all has passed. And honestly, seasons just go by. And I think we've known each other now for like four or five years and it's really disconcerting. Yeah. So uh, breadsticks and shots at Kilroy's at the combine, and then we'll figure this out later. Okay. It's going to be okay. Uh, I hear sources say that this is one of the best performing articles on FoxSports.com currently. Oh, I can't shush. figure out why. Uh, with today's news that Nathaniel Hackett, formerly of the Denver Broncos, then formerly of the Green Bay Packers, becoming the Jets offensive coordinator, how much more real does this make a potential Aaron Rodgers trade? I think it makes it a lot more real, quite honestly. And I think that this is all but signaling that this is Joe Douglas's intention. And he wants to entice Aaron Rodgers because – I mean, Aaron Rodgers can choose where he goes if he ultimately decides to play football next year. We don't know that that is the case quite yet. He said that he has not made a decision whether or not he's going to retire. But he has also proved to be a little bit more open to going somewhere else. But that is ultimately up to him. The Packers have said they want him back. So um, he can kind of pull all of the puppet strings in this situation. And I have to imagine going to, with an offensive coordinator to a good situation in New York. Let's be serious. Like, let's be real here. They've got a really good defense. Uh, they could use a little bit more work on that offensive line, but uh, they've got some really exciting weapons too on offense. And then with an offensive coordinator that you won your last two MVPs underneath. So I don't know, it seems like a good situation that they're setting up to put, give to Aaron Rodgers on a silver platter. So, I mean, as far as like the puppet master element of Aaron Rodgers, why is this any different than the last two off seasons with him, Carm? I don't know that it is really. And I feel like he, he said he's not going to hold Green Bay hostage, but like he's and, and granted, I mean, you know, free agency hasn't come up all that other thing, but like there are dominoes that still need to fall that are waiting on his decision. And I mean, this Green Bay front office has to be scrambling at this point, trying to figure out all of the different scenarios that could play out here, even if he tells them that he's going to play football tomorrow and they are in cap hell, they need to shave off about 14 million, I believe off the cap. Um, and there aren't a lot of easy ways to do that. And even with trading Aaron Rodgers, and they're kind of in between a rock and a hard place. And so I think that the easier part for them is if he does stay, but if he doesn't want to, they're not going to make him either. Carmen Vitale of Fox Sports is here with us on 104.5 The Zone. At Carmy V is where you can follow her on Twitter. And, of course, foxsports.com is where you can read it. So the complicated part of the trade, uh, $60 million cash money is what this man yeah. is owed next year. How much yeah. further do you uh, – and I obviously go – I don't want you to give away all the details that are in the article. I want people to read what is one of the best performing articles on foxsports.com. Oh, my God. But uh, how much more complicated does it get? Um, so there are situations where if Green Bay decides to trade him prior to the June 1 deadline, um, they can't save any money off the cap. In fact, they add money to their cap hit and, and how much they're going to be over. They add about $8 million because he will be due a $40 million cap hit 
uh, in dead money at that point. But then you basically get to take advantage of any collateral you would get for him in the form of draft picks immediately. You could put those towards the 2023 20, draft. You could acquire draft capital in this draft. Now, if they wait till after 6-1, they can actually save $15 million on the cap, but then you're delaying any return on Rodgers to 2024, and you haven't even picked up Jordan Love's fifth-year option yet. That's the other part of this whole puzzle, too, is you've got a quarterback on his rookie deal still, and honestly, I think they've kind of missed the window with him as it is to build around him and to kind of take advantage of the fact they have a quarterback on a rookie contract because they've tied up so much money with Aaron Rodgers and they just – can't seem to move him. Uh, I think what they should have done is probably moved him last year. Uh, and now, and so now there's like, again, that's why it's complicated. Like I'm talking in circles because there's not a really great option for Green Bay. Right. And even if he does stay, his cap hit continues to escalate as per his contract, the farther we go into this. They do have an out after 2024, but or like into the 2024 season, but it's still expensive. <laughs> like there is no getting out of this deal without having to shed or pay this man some serious money. His cap hit is actually only 31.6 going into next season because some of that is a, the 58.3 million due to him is uh, 58.3 of it is no 55 of it. I'm getting my numbers confused. They're all in the article. Most of it is an option <laughs> bonus. <laughs> so if they exercise it, then it brings his cap hit down to 31.3, which makes it a little bit more attractive also for other teams. But uh, in the way that I was, I, I was kind of incredulous at all these numbers. And I was like, is a team willing to do this? Is a team willing to trade with Green Bay for the, for like, and pay all of this money up front? It's like, you know, European soccer levels of buyouts with, a, you know, as, as for trade capital and then having to pay this exorbitant salary and I talked to a couple of coaches around the league and they were like, absolutely. And I'm like, this is insane. Well, it just, I mean, this is the nature of, of quarterback thirsty teams in the NFL, right? And we, we understand that uh, Peter King had reported that Green Bay will only trade him to an AFC team. They don't want this dude coming back to haunt them at any point <laughs> in the next couple of seasons. Should they end up moving on from him or should he end up moving on from them is probably the more appropriate way to put it. So we'll see what happens with Aaron Rodgers. But given uh, given that you cover this entire division, the Chicago Bears, the number one overall pick, I was uh, I, I was having somebody make the case to me this morning that Chicago should draft a quarterback. The percentage chance of that happening is what with Justin Fields on the roster? Well, I think that it's interesting if you're talking about drafting a quarterback with the intention to trade that or drafting a quarterback with the intention to use him. Mm. I don't, I think there's very little chance that you are driving a quarterback with the intention of him, especially with the number one overall pick to sit behind Justin Fields. And I don't think that there, it makes any sense whatsoever to start over again from square one. That's why we're still waiting on the, the value, the full evaluation of Justin Fields right now is because it's his second offensive coordinator in not even two full seasons of being the starter. And you need to give him time to develop within a system that is being tailored towards him also. Like Luke Getze is building this offensive system around Justin Fields. This last year wasn't great. They stripped the entire roster down to this, like to the studs. And I thought that they would maybe keep like a bubble around Justin Fields, like making sure they were still investing in offensive line so as not to get him killed. But then you realize that the man can run and maybe he can get himself out of danger, although he was injured. There's a ton of factors here but everything leads me to believe that they are still going to have to try with Justin Fields you gave up so much capital to get him and I realized that was a prior regime but you don't want to start all over again new quarterback learning a new system you're not going to get anywhere with that you're not going to like build the foundation that's what these the the GM Ryan Poles Matty Refluce are very big about the fact that they're building a foundation and if you already take away one of the bricks that you've laid uh, that's 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 not building a foundation at all. So I really think there's zero percent chance that they're going to take a quarterback with the intention of using him. Now, if you want to play some chess and you want to grab one of those quarterbacks because you think that the trade value for them once they're already on your roster is going to be more than you would get for the pick itself, I don't know. I, that's 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 above my pay grade, but I don't see them getting a quarterback to use. At Carmi V is where you follow her on Twitter. Um, 
can anything be done to stop the Minnesota Vikings from being choking dogs? <laughs> Uh, I realized I have not, this is my first year covering the division. I grew up outside of Chicago. So I grew up with these teams and have witnessed, uh, from afar, the plight of the Minnesota Vikings and their fan base. And I really thought that this year, uh, was going to be different. And I realized how naive that really was. Yes. Um, the, I will say, I do think that this, I mean, it was one of Kirk Cousins best years. They did not lose because of Kirk Cousins, which I do think is different. So they have issues still, but they're different issues. And they did fire their defensive coordinator. Um, not that I think that Ed Donatel is a bad defensive coordinator. Obviously, he's had a, what, you know decades upon decades in the NFL. I think the game maybe has passed him by a little bit, and that's they need some new creative blood. I mean, you've got Neil Hunter and Darius Smith on either side of that line. You should be able to be heading to the quarterback on a consistent basis. So they're making the right moves, and I'm – optimistic about the future while also understanding that I'm very naive in how much thing they've been so close so many times only to just fall catastrophically apart. Okay. So we, uh, we are currently on video for those of you watching on zone TV, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, half the YouTube chat has fallen in love with Carmen. The other half is asking me uh, to ask you questions about something that I'm currently being dragged for. Carmen, did you ever Ooh. at any point, because I know this is your second favorite thing outside of football is making fun of me. Um, did you ever Don't give yourself that much credit, Buck? <laughs> there she is. <laughs> did, did you at, at any point in your college career have bottle mm. service at a bar? Yes. Okay, so I'm not alone here. Bleep all of you. All of you. I Buck, got Buck, I went to Arizona State. Okay. So <laughs> it is I wasn't getting bottle service at like a grungy college bar. Yeah. No, like like clubs. You, you and deserve stuff to be like dragged that. for that. Yeah, no, I, I don't mean, deserve I that. I was it wasn't a grungy. You, listen, you have been. Well, I don't know. You've been to Kilroy's in in Indianapolis. Yeah. But this is Kilroy's in Bloomington. This was a thing that was done there. I it's the it's the Arizona state of the Midwest. I don't know that I buy that, but okay. <laughs> to be and to be fair, all right. It, I will come to your defense a little bit. Um there are um, there are people that exist that just buy the bottle because it is a little bit more like the bottle itself and even if they're at like the bar like i was out with jason pierre paul once and he just bought a bottle to sit on the to sit on the bar like he didn't he what we didn't have a table nothing else he was like it was just a very casual thing and so i feel like there are people out there that just get bottles because when you have a bunch of people with you it makes sense. That's what we did when people come in town. You, you get a table, you have a big time. And what a what, what an incredible uh, uh, name for you to pick back up <laughs> off the ground. I was out one time with Jason Pierre-Paul. I ran into him, I should say. I wasn't out with him. I ran into him. T Tampa was a very small place. Important clarification. And those guys were very fun. <laughs> Important clarification. I did not go out with Jason Pierre-Paul, but I saw him. And because he just had a bottle at the bar, he was, you know, it was, it was everybody come on. It was great. All right. I, in the back room, do we do we feel that this is justification, even though Carmen went to Arizona State as opposed to Indiana, that bottle service in college is not as as big an anomaly as you're making it seem? I wasn't paying attention. Thank you very much. Carmen <laughs> Vitale of Fox Sports. Read her great article on all the details on the complications of an Aaron Rodgers trade and continue to follow her coverage for Fox of the NFC North. Carmen Joy, uh, 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 Los Angeles, are you going to Senior Bowl? Uh, I will not be at Senior Bowl, unfortunately, which is the first time in quite a few years. I'm very upset about it, um, but I will be at Super Bowl. So that was kind of the, they're like, well, you got to go to Super Bowl. And I actually may have some things here to do in LA this weekend. So Okay. Well, what, what, a, what, a, what a trade off. Arizona for Mobile, Alabama. I, very, I pity you. At this time. All right. Thank I you know. for the Thank time. You for your awesome prayers. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you for the time, Carmen. It's always fun. Mm -hmm.